Who here would recognize a playground if they saw one? A playground set is pretty standard. It often has various raised platforms with many, with many ways of climbing a board, like stairs and ladders. It often has much to do once you're there, like tunnels to crawl through and bridges to run across. It even has ways of getting down, like slides and fireman poles. Growing up, most of us really enjoyed the running, jumping, climbing, swinging, crawling that these playgrounds provided. They provided a place for us to be free, to explore, and to push our body to the limits. We learned to run faster, jump higher, climb quicker. Some of us even took these activities off the playground. We learned to climb trees, jump on our beds, or even play the classic childhood game, Floor is Lava. In all these activities, we explored a common thing, the way our bodies move and interact with the environment. Then came the tragedy of growing up. Our recesses were replaced with desks, our playtime replaced with homework, and our playgrounds replaced with social media. Now, none of these are bad, but the intrigue and excitement for movement in the environment was lost to these rites of passage. Some went on to specialize their movement by joining specific sports like basketball, baseball, football. Others preferred their devices or books and dropped off the grid of physical activity. But some, a small, growing number, opted instead to never leave those playgrounds behind them. No, they found ways to turn the world around them into a playground. This park bench, playground. This wall, playground. This table, playground. In their eyes, movement never stops. There is no limit to what we're capable of, and there is no ceiling to our accomplishment. These people who never grew out of running, jumping, climbing, swinging, crawling, we call them tracers. And these tracers have trained their ability to move and interact with the environment to the point of accomplishing feats previously thought to be impossible and making reasonable feats that were previously thought to be dangerously unwise. These tracers who never stop moving, they call it parkour. Parkour is about learning how to move and interact with your environment in the most quick and efficient way. These tracers will learn anything from scaling buildings to climbing walls to jumping over anything in their way so that no obstacle will ever be unconquerable for them. They turn the world around them into their own personal playground or obstacle course, finding places to challenge their skills and techniques in locations such as sidewalks, playgrounds, parks, universities, and so on. And as they explore the way their body moves and interacts with the environment, they also get the added benefit of exploring the natural and urban settings around their home, coming to know the places they live much better. So about 20, 25 years ago, parkour was first kicking off as an urban sport. And the first group to ever train parkour was this group called the Yamakasi, and it consisted of young men from France. Two of these young men were David Bell, the credited founder of parkour, and Sebastian Foucault, his close friend. Now, as this group trained together, Bell and Foucault began to differ on their opinions of where the sport should go in the future. Bell preferred the practical, efficient, humble, hardworking discipline of parkour, whereas Foucault saw potential for a more expressive, artistic, stylistic sport of parkour. As the two continued to train together with this group, they eventually could not handle the disagreement and split off from the group, resulting in a continuation of the sport, of the discipline of parkour. But while that, 
discipline continued to live on, Foucault added elements of style from various other disciplines, such as breakdancing or capoeira, and that resulted in a new sport titled free running. Now for me, I started parkour about three and a half years ago. I was surfing YouTube, like most teenagers do, and I came across this channel called Ronnie Street Stunts. And this guy was doing flips and tricks like I had never seen before. And I did not see them even possible. But there he was, right in front of my eyes. Now, I didn't think to do any of what he was doing. I knew he was a pro, and I knew I was so far out from being able to perform those tricks. So I just left it as it was. But a few days later, I came back to his channel, and I found a full list of hundreds of tutorials, videos detailing how to perform and learn these tricks that he was performing in his videos in a safe and controlled manner. So I took to this list of tutorials, and I found the two safest, most low-risk techniques I could possibly find, the safety roll and the safety vault. Do you see the theme? <laughs> As I practiced these tricks, and I mastered them, I could not get enough of exploring the way our bodies move, of interacting with the environment in ways I never had before. I didn't view tables the same way that I did before. I didn't view the ground the same way as I did before. I didn't view falling the same way as I did before. And I had only gotten a taste of what parkour was. So after I learned those two tricks, I went straight back to Ronnie Street Stunts and I le learned as many tricks as I could possibly find. Now, just about everyone who starts doing parkour faces the same stumbling block, fear. Fear is a beast who can come upon you at the worst moments, right as you're about to try something new and tell you it's not worth it. But if you can push fear back just enough to go for it, fear often comes around for round two. He tells you to give up, to fail, to stop right in the middle of what you're doing. Sadly, fear can be one of the biggest deterrents to parkour. Now, us tracers were well aware of that, and we all approach it in very different ways. Some of us try to push through the fear. They ignore the fear and they go for it anyways. While others instead try to eradicate the fear on the front end by doing a variety of techniques, including just practicing. But I stand somewhere in the middle. Fear, yes, can stop you from doing amazing and new and incredible things, but it can also stop you from doing stupid and dumb things. Fear greatly decreases the rate and risk of injury in parkour, but it can also stop you from trying amazing stuff. So I don't think parkour is a sport of overcoming or eradicating your fear. No, parkour is a sport of taking control of your fear, taking the reins and making that jump. So I was walking home from school one day, and I'm walking down the sidewalk, and I saw these handrails on the side of the sidewalk. And the first thing that came to mind was that this spot was gold. Now, most people would not think twice about this spot. They drive by without giving it a thought. But when I saw this spot, I saw a part to jump up, a part to jump down, and a part to jump across, and a whole lot of handrails to train my various techniques on. And the more I looked at this spot, the more I decided there were so many different challenges I could accomplish here. So I got excited, I started thinking, I started stretching, and I started training. And as I'm jumping around in this ditch with these handrails, my friend walked up. 
So we sat and we talked for a bit. And when the conversation started to die, he looked at my spot and he asked, what if you jumped from there on the handrail to the wall? Now, I thought this was kind of ridiculous. I mean, I had made jumps that big before, so the size of the jump was not what was concerning to me. What concerned me was the eight-foot fall, if I messed up, the very small lip on the wall that I was meant to land on, and the fact that I was jumping from a handrail, which could be slippery and is not a technique I had practiced very much. So we talked about it a bit more, and eventually he decided it was not smart. He receded his challenge and walked away. But as he was walking away, I looked at the spot a little more. And I thought, what if I could accomplish that challenge? What would I do to get there? So I took to the sidewalk right next to the gap, and I jumped the same distance just on the sidewalk. No lip of the wall, no eight foot gap, no handrail, just ground to ground. And I did that over and over and over and over until I was very comfortable with it. And then I jumped from the handrail down to the sidewalk. So it was the same gap, or the same distance, but I was jumping from a handrail, practicing that technique. And I did it over and over until I was comfortable. And finally, I jumped from the handrail to the wall, but without the gap. At this point, I knew for a fact that I could land it. I had done an identical jump, it just didn't have the same risk. So, I stepped up on that handrail, and right as I was leaning in for the jump, I stepped off that handrail. What happened? I knew I could do it, and I could do it, but one thing still stood in my way, and that was fear. I was scared of falling into that eight-foot ditch. I was scared of getting hurt. But I realized at that point that I could let that fear do two things to me. I could let that fear force me to give up. Or I could let that fear motivate me to land the trick, remind me why this is so important to me. So I stood up on that handrail, and I looked at where I was going to land, and I jumped, and my feet landed, not well, but successfully, on the wall on the other end. I had completed the challenge. I took the reins, and I made the jump. Fear should not deter people from parkour. In fact, training parkour instills basic habits of interacting with fear in a safe and controlled manner and gives you a better understanding of fear that you can apply in both your training and in your daily life. The two basic safety concepts that I often refer to in my training are progression and repetition. Sebastian Foucault, the founder of free running that I mentioned earlier, said, repetition, repetition, repetition. By this, he meant that no one lands a trick in their first try. And if they do, they haven't practiced enough to be able to land it every single try. Repetition is how tracers come to better understand the techniques they're learning and remember the techniques they're learning and find the flaws in the techniques they're learning so that they can improve. The second concept is progression. Progression is a matter of taking the end goal, that final challenge, the jump from the handrail to the wall, and breaking it up into small, achievable steps. In fact, the most common way of getting hurt in parkour is to see an advanced technique Assume you can do it, and then just go for it. With no repetition, no progression, no proper instruction, no guidance, that is the most common way of getting hurt in parkour. If you think about it, you can actually see both of these principles in my story of trying to land that jump. 
I found the small steps of jumping from sidewalk to sidewalk, handwalk, handrail to sidewalk, and so on, and I practiced them over and over and over until I was comfortable with them. So for the past few weeks, I've been working on a project. And this project was to write six workshop-style curri workshop curricula in written form. And the goal was to explain basic parkour concepts in a way that anyone can understand, but also in a way that would be useful for someone who knows parkour to teach others. I took all six workshop curricula and I compiled them on a website called PK Workshops, which can be found at pkworkshops.wordpress.com. My hope for this website is that anyone can take a look at it, read the descriptions, and use it in tandem with video tutorials so that they can fully understand these basic concepts as they learn parkour. Parkour is not some video reel of insane flips, tricks, jumps from buildings that you can't do. You can do parkour. It's just a matter of figuring out why you want to. Do you want to work out in a way that is more exciting than lifting weights? Do you want a community that can push you forward and encourage you? Or do you just want to try something new? I train parkour because I love to interact with the way that God created our bodies to move and interact with the environment. I love to explore it and discover and push my limits as far as they can go. Like I said, parkour is not something you can't do. In fact, it's literally moving more efficiently than you do now. You could count stip skipping stairs on a staircase as parkour. Parkour is a world of movement and community. Whether you're looking for a workout, looking for something new, or just looking for some friends, parkour can tailor perfectly to all of these desires. Do not let fear stop you. If I would challenge you with anything, it would be to take the reins and to make that jump. Thank you.